Are you thinking of taking the leap and purchasing a property in Portugal, but unsure of the initial costs involved, the hidden costs to be prepared for, and how to avoid those big, expensive mistakes? Then you're in the right place. Hi guys, it's Russell from Portugal Buyers, where we help expats move and purchase property in Portugal. You can book a free call with us using the first link in the description below. Here are all the important costs you need to know about buying a property in Portugal in 2024. Now let's get started with the biggest and most unavoidable cost. These are the IMT and the stamp duty. These will be paid at the same time prior to the signature of the deed. In Portugal, a deed of purchase refers to a legally binding document that finalizes the sale of the property. So how much do these taxes cost? For urban residential properties, the IMT tax is based on a progressive scale, depending on your property's value. Rates vary from 0 to 8% with deductibles. On the screen right now, you can see an updated 2024 table with all the IMT thresholds and percentages that you'll be paying on the purchase price. So you can pause the video and look at those to see what tax bracket you will fall into. However, the IMT deductibles vary ever so slightly if this is your primary or secondary property in Portugal. You can find an IMT calculator linked in the description below on our website, portugalbuyers.com, so you can estimate your IMT costs. The next cost is stamp duty, which is charged at a fixed rate of 0.8% of the property purchase price. In addition, if there is a loan, a further stamp duty is payable at a rate of 0.6% on the value of that loan. The final deed is done before a notary. The notary ensures the contract and its implications are understood properly by both parties, the buyer and the seller, and that the contents of the contract are valid and lawful, and that any agreed monies have exchanged hands accordingly and any related taxes have been collected. That is the IMT and the stamp duty. The notary fees will vary between 500 and 1,000 euros. And after you have completed the purchase and signed the deed, you will have to register your new property with the land registry to put the property in your name. The registration has a cost of 250 euro and an additional 250 euro is payable if you also have a mortgage registered for that property. It is absolutely vital and essential to have the right support when purchasing a property in Portugal from lawyers that represent your best interest, the buyers. Now the average price for legal representation costs between 1% to 1.5% of the purchase price of that property. However, we get our clients a significantly reduced fixed rate through our long-term partnerships. You can book a free call to find out more about our services. Now let's discuss the costs associated with mortgages in Portugal. As a foreigner, you will have to put a minimum of 30% down on the property. And to get started with the mortgage, you will have to pay an average application fee of 290 euro and the bank evaluation for your chosen property of 280 euros. Here is an extra cost and service that is very uncommonly done in Portugal and that I find absolutely essential to do for all of our clients. This is a professional property inspection. The inspection costs between 500 to 800 euros depending on the size of the property and the checks conducted. Now make sure you do this so you don't end up in a money pit and have a nightmare situation on your hands. Now let's look at the closing cost for a property with a value of 900,000 that has no mortgage on it. Firstly, the IMT and stamp duty will cost you 61,200 euros. Next, you will be paying an average price for the lawyers between 1 and 1.5%, 1 but we'll go on the lower end because it's a more expensive property. So that will be on average 9,000 euros, although we can save you a significant sum through our long-term partnerships. Next, as I advise, you should be paying for a property inspection, which will be roughly 600 euros for a full check by a licensed professional. After, you will pay the notary and registration, which will cost 750 for the notary and 250 for the registration, totaling 1,000 for those costs. So the grand total for a 900,000 euro property will cost you 71,800 in the extra closing costs. Now, I always suggest budgeting for 10% closing costs, just so you can be on the conservative side and know exactly how much you're budgeting for. And we'll be able to give our clients a very accurate estimation as it's very situational depending on each circumstance and the property you're looking at. As I mentioned, you can find calculators for different taxes on our website, portugalbuyers.com. Now let's get into some of the costs you will incur when owning your property in Portugal that you should be aware of. First, there are two annual municipality taxes you must be aware of, which are the IMI and the AIMI. 
both taxes are based off the VPT, Valor Patrimonial Tributario, the value of the property, and must be paid every year from the moment you purchase the property. Now the VPT value is not the same value as what you purchased your property for. The purchase price is used to pay the IMT, but the VPT is used to pay those annual municipality taxes. Now having these two different values can seem confusing, but to keep it simple, the finances will evaluate your property based on a couple criteria, such as the location and the age of your property, among other things. They will then come to a value that is used for the annual property taxes, the IMI and the AIMI. Now this is gonna be typically lower than your purchase price of your property, so you'll be paying um, a less percentage for those annual taxes. The IMI varies from 0.3% to 0.45% for property's VPT value, and the AIMI, which is a property wealth tax, is also paid using the VPT value and starts at 0.7% for properties over 600,000 euros in value. Now, if you own an apartment, you'll be paying a condominium fee, which can vary between 30 euros per month to hundreds, depending on the upkeep costs of that building. And of course, you will have your standard bills that will vary significantly depending on the usage of that property and the size of your property. I have also left a link in the description to the finances website so you can calculate a rough estimate of your VPT value based on the different criteria. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, here is a tip to save a lot of money during the purchase process. One of the biggest ways many foreigners lose out is by using a double agent that represents both the buyer and the seller. Now this is a conflict of interest as the agent is incentivized to get the highest purchase price for the property as they make the most commission from that. So if you use a double agent, they will know exactly how excited you are about that property and that you really, really want it. And they'll go to the seller and they'll say, look, we know we can get an extra 20, 30, 50,000 out of him for this property. And they'll be incentivized to do that as they don't have your best interests in mind. However, if you use a different real estate agent for both the buyer and the seller, they can hide that from the seller's agent and make sure that you're getting the best deal. Now we're an exclusive buyer's agent, so we'll work only on your behalf, and therefore we can save you a ton of money in the negotiation process, along with leveraging useful data to be able to push the price down as well. So if you are interested in hearing more about that, you can click the first link in the description below, book a free call with us, and I look forward to seeing you there. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.